is true! Hermitcraft and Empire's SMP are connected. But how? If you've never watched Hermitcraft, then you're missing out. As one of the longest running Minecraft SMPs on YouTube to this date, Hermitcraft has a special place in the history of vanilla Minecraft survival multiplayer worlds. Founded over a decade ago in 2012, Hermitcraft has run for nine seasons and players have no plans to stop the fun anytime soon. Currently, the service members include insanely popular Minecrafters such as Rendog, DocM77, Iskol85, Impulse SV, Mumbo Jumbo, Green, Good Times with Scar. You might also recognize some of your favorite Empire's SMP players on the Hermitcraft server, which includes Pearlescent Moon, Gemini Tay, and False Symmetry. Hermitcraft has never really had one specific theme. The players on the server do a little bit of everything, ranging from creating beautifully constructed mega bases, designing and building innovative redstone contraptions and farms, playing mini games with one another, coming up with a series of drawn out pranks, or even going to war with each other. Despite all the fun, Hermitcraft is much lighter on the storytelling, lore, and roleplay elements than the other SMP series such as Empires, but the Hermits have actually gotten a little bit more into it in recent years. For example, some of the best stories told on the Hermitcraft server in recent years includes the server-wide civil war back in season 6, where Grian led his faction, the G Team, to victory against Doc MC77's Team Star after a series of pranks went horribly awry. Season 6 also included a heist by residents of the hippie commune, Rendog, Grian, and Impulse SV, as the trio raided Doc MC77 and Good Times with Scar's testing facility, Area 77, to get Grian's time machine back. Season 7 also had its fair share of stories, such as the election where Good Times with Scar beat out his opposing candidates, Stress Monster, Mumbo Jumbo, and False Symmetry, to become mayor of the server's shopping district. Or when Green started the resistance in an all-out turf war against Scar's Hermitcraft Environmental Protection Agency. Most recently, we came to find out that the entirety of Season 8 of Hermitcraft actually took place in a simulated reality, the Hermitrix, designed to keep the Hermit's mind healthy and occupied while they were in stasis aboard the Hermitheus, a ship designed to carry the Hermits from one season to the next. However, after a dangerous virus infected the Hermitrix, Rembob and Goatman, counterparts for Rendog and DocMC77, who were left in charge of the Hermitrix, enacted the Moonatrix protocol, which caused the moon in the simulated world to crash into the server, ending season 8 and wiping out the dangerous virus. Renbob and DocMC77 piloted the Hermitheus to the world of Hermitcraft season 9, which is where we currently are in the Hermitcraft timeline. As for the connection to the Empire's SMP, we need to look at what Grian has been up to for season 9 of Hermitcraft. One of Grian's main goals this season is to improve storytelling abilities, so he has decided to do just that through his Minecraft builds. In episode 7 of his season 9 series, Grian constructed the Rift, a mysterious tear in reality under his mega base that Grian describes as a doorway to other worlds. And ever since he built the Rift, strange things have been happening to Grian on the Hermitcraft server. At the end of the ninth episode, Grian falls down a hole, fully expecting to die from the fall. However, instead of dying, Grian survived what should have been a fatal blow, only to land in front of the rift, which emanated some strange noises. Now that's weird. Rian was baffled by the incident, not knowing what to make of any of it. Did the rift somehow protect Grian from dying in the fall? Later on, Grian describes how the rift is an essential part to understanding the story behind his base, which consists of a building carved into a massive rock formation, along with some floating islands. Grian intends to build up his base with historically inspired architecture on the bottom islands of the builds, and the higher up the build goes, the more futuristic looking the structures will become. Perhaps the people who once lived in Green's base traveled through the rift across different points in time and established a community together, which would explain why Green plans to mix architecture from numerous time periods together into his build. Green also has a shop this season known as The Entity, which is a large living rock with robotic legs, leading me to believe that it might be an otherworldly being that emerged from Green's rift long ago. Essentially, it appears like the rift could be used for both traveling through time and traveling 
traveling across the multiverse. Rian even states that the rift can be used to traverse time and space, and he plans to use the rift to give his viewers a sense of nostalgia, stating that the things he plans to come out of the portal will be from previous series of Hermitcraft. In fact, in episode 17 of Green's series, our first multiversal visitor, Grumbot, makes his way through Green's rift into the Hermitcraft season 9 world. If you have never met Grumbot, he is an artificial intelligence supercomputer created by Green and Mumbo during season 7. However, the Grumbot who traveled through Green's rift was not actually one and the same with the one we knew from season 7 of Hermitcraft. Instead, the new Grumbot reveals that he comes from a timeline when Mumbo Jumbo was the one who was elected mayor of the shopping district during season 7 instead of good times with Scar. Green then sets up a laboratory around the rift, where he gives this new Grumbot a place to stay. However, this Grumbot hates being pushed around by Green, to the point where the supercomputer has even vaguely implied that he killed his version of Green when he grew tired of being pushed around by his creator. So we are just a little scared of him to say the least. In episode 23 of Green's series, he discovers a mysterious button sitting on the lodestone right outside the rift with a sign that reads, Begin. If you know anything about Green, you know that he just can't help himself but to push a mysterious button. While he initially resisted the temptation to press the button, Green ultimately pressed it at the end of the episode, and we were left on a cliffhanger wondering what the button could have possibly done. But we believe Green just opened the door to the multiverse. Hang on, because here's where things get juicy. Now we move our sights over to some recent episodes on the Empire's SMP for season 2. At the end of LD Shadow Lady's 11th episode in her series, Mayor Lizzie of Credit City discovers a glowing cave with a mysterious purple rift portal right outside of Pixel Rift's massive great bridge, letting curiosity get the best of her. Lizzie ordered the greatest explorer in all of Animalia, Gary the Fox, to explore the rift and come back in on peace. However, Gary didn't return from his journey, leaving Lizzie terrified for her friend, but she wasn't the only one who came across the mysterious rift. You see, after smallish beings of Stratos came to Pixel Rift's empire to trade for some emeralds, the god of law also discovered the portal. Joel described how the portal involved some strange law that was happening on the server, and he put an item of his own through the portal, one of his sheriff toys from Joel's toy ban. After Pixel Rift discovered the portal near his bridge, he threw a bunch of eggs through the portal and went on his merry way. Both Sheriff Jimmy and Pirate Joey would also go on to discover the rift, though neither of them put anything through. Finally, during a recent flip episode, Lizzie came to the cave goblin, asking for his help to retrieve Gary the Fox from the portal. Enlisting the help of Sniff, the brother of Whip's hog mount, Snot, the cave goblin sent his hog through the portal in an attempt to rescue the missing fox. Neither Sniff nor Gary have ever been heard from since in the world of empires. Green's next Hermitcraft episode involves him discovering a fox chickens, and a hog on the other side of the rift. What I'm really interested in finding out is what this could mean for the players who are on both servers. Are there multiple versions of Gemini Tain's false symmetry? And what will Sausage of Sanctuary do if you find out that a variant of the sunflower goddess, Palesa Moon, is lying on the other side of the mysterious rift? We only hope that these questions and more will be answered as the multiverse continues to expand.